we just sat down at Lola Valentina. It's very, very cute. And I think I'm gonna get a margarita and right. a Caribbean platter. We just got back to the room and we're getting ready for bed. We landed at like five. It took a while to go through immigrations and customs. And then it took a while to wait for our shuttle to come. We pre-ranged a shuttle, but it was just bad traffic and it took like 40 minutes. And then the traffic was also still really bad on the way to the ferry. And then the ferry, <laughs> we took off at seven on the ferry. And then that took only like 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And then we got to Isla and then we pretty much just walked to the hotel because the taxi line was so long. And then we pretty much just like got to the room. I like rinsed off, put makeup on, threw a dress on, and then we went out to dinner, met up with some of our friends and we're back at the room. like three days in but <laughs> we have some shelves more shelves and then to the left we have our bathroom I will say the lighting in here is not the best so if you're doing makeup maybe you might want to bring a makeup light but otherwise it's pretty modern the shower doesn't have the best water pressure and the floor does get a little bit wet but other than that very nice and then we have a double garden view room. 
And this is in like the more modern suites. There's our view and our little balcony. That is pretty much it. Beds are pretty comfy, it's pretty clean. So far so good. So you guys just watched my Isla Mujeres vlog. Thank you for watching. Continue watching if you want to hear an explanation. Otherwise, feel free to click off the video. Thank you for watching. But I figured it would be helpful to include an explanation of the clips because I was there with friends, so I didn't really get a chance to talk to the camera like I would have normally if I was maybe by myself. So I wanted to explain how the trip went, give tips um, if you're going to Mexico or Isla Mujeres soon and yeah just kind of explain how the trip went overall so we went for my friend's wedding it was absolutely gorgeous depending on where you're staying this is kind of like tips before you even get to the island i'll explain what we did in a second but if you've never been to isla mujeres before you can't really walk the whole island i suppose you could but you wouldn't want to with your luggage so if you're staying near the ferry port anywhere near the centro you could probably walk with your luggage to your hotel although i would recommend still probably getting a taxi and then if you're staying anywhere like on the south end of the island you're for sure gonna want a taxi or some sort of if you have like a big crew of people going you're gonna probably want to re like pre-arrange transportation on the island like to the actual hotel on the island too if you have like a lot of suitcases and stuff that might not even fit in a taxi so you just want to make sure you plan ahead we stayed at playa la media luna and it was beautiful and we ended up walking there from the ferry dock we were gonna take a taxi but then it had been such a long day already that we were just like you know what like let's just walk it's not that far so i think it was like a 15 minute walk with our suitcases but it was fine so getting to the island was relatively easy it just takes a little while because of all the waiting you have to do in between the legs of the trip getting off the plane getting our bags getting the shuttle getting to the ferry took like two hours it would probably be faster if it wasn't rush hour but like keep in mind probably like two hours on a, on a busier day. You, or you wanna try and time it so that you don't have to wait around at the ferry for the next one. So we timed it pretty well and we got there like right before the seven, like we were the last people on the seven o'clock ferry. I've never stayed in a boutique hotel before, but I really did enjoy it. But I was like hoping that they had like at least two water bottles in the fridge in the room because they know that we're travel, like it's a long travel day and we're gonna be thirsty. I think the only reason I'm pointing it out is because if I would have known ahead of time, I, we would have just planned a little bit better, but we didn't really know what was going to be provided. Um, but to be fair, we didn't ask beforehand either. So I could have emailed and like asked if they provided like food or drinks or anything. So anyways, we checked into the hotel Wednesday night and we immediately got ready and went out for dinner. We went to Lola Valentina and it was so delicious. I think that was my number one favorite restaurant on the island that we went to. Me, obviously, I love that they had a gluten-free menu or that they had gluten-free options on their menu, like specifically stated gluten-free on the menu. That's like super rare to find in Isla Mujeres, at least from what I can tell. I did a lot of research before going on the trip to try and have an idea in my head of like what restaurants had gluten-free options. So if you're gluten-free and you're going to Isla Mujeres, definitely try and plan ahead. I recommend eating at Lola Valentina and then maybe um, um, Aroma Isla. That was also really good. They don't really have specifically gluten-free food on that menu, but it's like a healthy kind of fast casual, but also sit down restaurant. I, I thought it was really cute. We also ate at Mama Rosa and they have um, gluten-free spaghetti or they have gluten-free like spaghetti fettuccine and penne. So yeah, Wednesday night, went to Lola Valentina, met up with our friends for a couple of drinks, went back to the hotel. But at the very end of the night before we went back to the hotel, to sleep we ran to the convenience store and grabbed like a gallon and a liter of water and like lugged it back to the hotel but like i said it wasn't that big of a deal and then speaking of like buying things and paying for everything definitely order pesos ahead of time before you get to mexico 
Um, I got mine through Wells Fargo because I used Wells Fargo as my bank. And I just, honestly, I didn't even want to make a trip to the bank because I had already been running other errands to get ready for the trip. So I was like, let me just eliminate one of those errands. And I got them mailed to me and they were like overnighted. And I think it was like an extra $5, but I honestly didn't care. I was like, I just don't want another errand to run right now. So I just ordered the pesos. I got $200 US in pesos, which was 4,000 pesos, which ended up being almost perfect for like four-ish days of like eating, drinking, activities, things like that. We did end up getting a little bit more cash towards the end, but I don't think I really needed it. But I did end up getting like an extra 20 USD in pesos, which I, yeah, I just don't really feel like was super necessary, but I'm just trying like guess about how much you'll be buying and try to match it in pesos before you go. Because there is a bank like right by the ferry port on Isla Mujeres if you need to go get more money, but the exchange rate is way worse. I think it's like 18 pesos to one US dollar instead of like, in general, I would say like 20 is a better exchange rate. So you should, get like at least 20 pesos to the dollar if you get it in the US and then bring it to Mexico rather than if you wait and get it at the airport or like actually on Isla Mujeres. We woke up Thursday and went to breakfast at Letty's. They were very, very accommodating. Like they put us on the end of everyone and grabbed like three tables and like seven chairs to make sure that we could all sit with each other. So it was very nice. But yeah, so Letty's was really good. Then we did a catamaran day with just the girls. That was super fun. I definitely recommend doing the catamaran and golf cart when you go to Isla and maybe like a beach club too. That would be fun. We didn't have time to do a beach club, but I would definitely recommend checking out a beach club. Walking down Hidalgo Street for all the bars and restaurants. That's also a must do. Let's see. So the catamaran day, we just kind of like stuck on the west side of the island and we went down to i actually don't know what the area was called if i can google it maybe i'll find out but we went to an area where a few girls wanted to go snorkeling so they did that for like a half hour and then we just kind of meandered our way back up to the north side of the island and then we got off and i think we took off from is it muelle muelle siete okay well in spanish it would be muelle siete but pero but in English, it's like Mule 7. So that's where we took off from and came back to from that dock at that restaurant. And it ended up being like super nice. Like they made us unlimited drinks the whole time we were on the boat. They made appetizers for everyone. But then we went back to the hotel, got ready for dinner. That night on Thursday night is when we went to Mama Rosa for dinner. I'm not like a huge pasta person, but I was like, okay, at least they have gluten-free pasta. So like, I know I can have something to eat here and I don't need to worry about it. I got the carbonara. I am I will say like that pasta was insanely good. I like devoured the entire plate. I normally don't even finish plates of pasta cause I get too full or like they're just not super satisfying to me. And then for dessert, we walked down to Pana y Chocolato, which is the little like ice cream shop down the way on Hidalgo street. I ended up getting like a little sorbet. It was very good. We honestly just spent the rest of the night kind of walking up and down Hidalgo Street and eating our little desserts while we chatted. And then we met up with everyone else at a bar called Snappers. And that was pretty much it for Thursday. Then we got up on Friday and we already had planned this ahead of time. So definitely try to plan your activities ahead of time if you can, especially to like make sure you get the times you want and make sure you get a good rate and like don't get ripped off or anything. So we scheduled our golf cart like a week or two in advance. And we just decided to do three hours on Friday, which was $45 from Joaquin's golf cart rentals. And the only reason we went through Joaquin is because we've done it in the past from previous times we've been to Isla Mujeres. But there's literally so many golf cart rental places. Like just do your research and find one that looks re reputable and has, you know, decent prices. $45 for three hours was like pretty fair. But then the price like got way better if you wanted to get like eight hours, it would be less per hour. Especially if you're staying on the south side of the island, you're gonna wanna probably just have a golf cart for like the whole time that you're there. So try and find a deal that's actually worth it for like multiple days of renting a golf cart because you're gonna want it. Like it's really only super walkable if you stay near the Centro, but if you're anywhere south of that, it's still like really nice, but it's not as walkable. So you're gonna want a golf cart to get around, especially if you wanna check out like other hotels other beach clubs, come up to the Centro and go out to dinner. Like you're gonna wanna be able to drive yourself places unless you wanna get a taxi every time, which is totally possible too, but you're gonna wanna be able to get around. So Friday morning, we walked to Joaquin's golf cart rentals 
and we stopped at coffee break on the way there it's a very cute little like coffee shop um just kind of like on the side of a building then we decided to eat at oscar's grill i will say the food was very good i got chicken fajitas but the view is not great you're just kind of like sitting street side like staring at a street so we stopped there and then honestly our little golf cart trip like three hours flew by so we returned the golf cart went back to the hotel everybody was hanging out by the pool for the afternoon so we got to like just mingle by the pool get some drinks from the bartender at the hotel i literally said this before we got there and then i still forgot i was like oh don't let me forget to put sunscreen on my hairline like this on my hair part and i still forgot both days and my hair part got really really badly burned and then it peeled it was kind of gross. Definitely, definitely don't forget to put sunscreen on your hair part, extra on your nose, extra on your ears. Like you don't want to be peeling. You know what I mean? Okay. So we spent a little time by the pool in the ocean, walked in, got ready for dinner. And then we ended up going to, oh yeah. Friday night is when we went to Aroma Isla for dinner. I wish their menu specified it, but they have like vegan and vegetarian options. And I was like, okay, if they have vegan and vegetarian options, they probably have something that's gluten-free. So I got the like, mm, I forgot what it was called. It was like a chicken dish with like some spinach sauce on it and vegetables, but it was like stuffed chicken. And I, like at first glance, I think the menu said it was like stuffed with like walnuts, blueberries, and some sort of cheese and maybe mushrooms. Super good, super good. I was so pleasantly surprised that it was so delicious. So I recommend that dish. And then my friend got the pad thai, but I think it was still made with rice noodles. So I think it was still gluten-free. And then we walked down the street to Stingray. And I did, I like, I guess the whole three floors of Stingray. I am honestly not really sure, but it's on the corner of Hidalgo Street. It's like huge three floors, like you can't miss it. We were eyeing the top floors because they looked beautiful. And we were like, we need to go up there. Even if we just get like a drink and take some pictures and leave because it was like so gorgeous. So I have a couple pictures on Instagram of what they looked like. Here's how it looked. And we had so much fun up there just like getting a couple drinks and like chatting the whole time. Like we just kind of hung up by ourselves. That's I think my favorite spot to go to is like the third floor of Stingray was so much fun. Mostly because we kind of had it to ourselves because it wasn't that busy. But I, I will mention the first floor of that spot is um, karaoke and we were like definitely not into karaoke. So we definitely stayed upstairs, but I actually preferred it up there anyway. It was way more like aesthetically pleasing and it was just really gorgeous. And then we went back to the hotel. We were saving Saturday morning brunch for North Garden. And I had seen all these reviews about how it's like, oh yeah, like if you need a spot for brunch, go to North Garden or like lunch, go to North Garden. And then we passed by late at night one night and like the gate in front says open four to 10 PM. And we're like, what? Like, I'm like, maybe there was like two entrances and like two parts of the restaurant. And like, maybe like North Garden was separate from Garden because we saw on the gate for what we thought was North Garden, it just said Garden. And I'm like, wait a minute, because I've seen all these reviews and like vlogs even recently saying like, go to North Garden for breakfast. So I'm like, am I stupid? Like, is there two entrances or something? Or did they like just change the branding of it like in the last week? Cause we went back to the hotel and like Googled it and we were like, no, people are saying that there's like brunch here. So I don't know why it said four, four to 10 PM. I'm assuming we must have been looking at the wrong entrance or something. I really don't know. I was a little bummed out, but whatever, like not the end of the world. There was other brunch spots around. So we did some Googling in the hotel room that night and we went to Oh My Brunch, which was like a similar distance, you know, just a short walk away. And it was super, super good. So I really recommend going there too for brunch, um, Letty's and Oh My Brunch. Yeah, we didn't spend too much time there. We just wanted to actually get like a good full meal in before we went back to go get ready for the wedding. And then we started getting ready for the wedding and took our COVID tests. We did the Optum telehealth ones through like the, it's like the Abbott box, but it's like the telehealth one. You have to get the telehealth one, not the regular Abbott Binax now at home test. It has to be the Abbott Binax now. And then there's like a giant red bar on the front that says like, telehealth or something or like don't like do not open until test so do not open the box until your test okay and we had both done it like this was our first time trying it but it was very simple but i'm glad that there were other options for testing on the island like obviously they're gonna accommodate you know travelers testing so if you needed to test somewhere else like they have doctors that can come to your room they have like little testing like trucks and sites like around the island that you can just like walk up to and get a test. So this is just kind of like a funny anecdote of my experience, but this doesn't really have anything to do with like traveling or specifically to Isla Mujeres. Of course, I'm like, this happens to me every time. Like when I have like, cause I had like 
what we got back to the hotel at like 11 and the wedding wasn't until five i was like okay i probably want to be ready at like four ish so that we can like relax take some pictures maybe have a drink before the wedding actually starts and just to not be rushed and i knew i had to help with my friends make up the bride at like 3 30. so i was like okay it's 11 now let me like start doing my hair maybe i'll start my makeup at like 2 2 30 i should be good and it's just like of course the days that you have so much time to get ready that you still run late somehow i don't know how that happens <laughs> so i did my hair did my covid test all went well and then i was like oh, i should have my makeup like 99 percent done by the time i go do my friend's makeup for her wedding and then i'll still have time for like touch-ups and getting dressed to come back here and like do that all before the actual wedding starts and i'll be good so i keep trying to rush through my makeup i get to the part where i'm starting to set my under eyes because i put on extra concealer because i was like i'm gonna be super snatched for this wedding and then the concealer was still a little too wet and there was like too much of it under my eye or like i should have waited for it to get a little more tacky first but like when you have really wet concealer and then you have like a glob of powder, which I, sh I was in a rush, I should have knocked off a little more of the powder before I put it on my face. The wet thick concealer plus like an extra giant glob of powder. I globbed on the brush and as soon as I took the brush away, I was like, oh no. Ugh. Like most people probably wouldn't have cared, but I was like, this is not happening. This is not happening. This is not happening. And I tried to make it work. I was like putting powder around my eyes and then I was like kind of going like this and I'm like, I have like 50 million crow's feet all along my eye right here. And I was like, mm, that's not normal. And I can feel it crunching. Like it felt crunchy on my skin. And I really debated trying to save it because of the time, because it was already getting close to like three. So I took it off <laughs> because I was not about to feel crepey all night. And it looked horrible. Like I was looking in my little small mirror and I'm like, no, because I'm not even making a face and you can see there's like a crusty chunk of makeup right here. And I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. Like the funny part is, of course, when I'm in a time crunch, like insane time crunch, like I think I did my full beat, like full makeup beat in like 20, no, 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 probably 30 minutes. Anyways, it's just funny how when you're like in an extreme rush, it ends up like turning out better than when you have like five hours to do it. But I thought that was a funny little story. And then the wedding was absolutely beautiful. And that was our last night there. So we didn't really do much um, on Sunday on the way back because even though our flights were at like 2.30 and then mine, or like my friend's flight was at like 2.30 and then mine was at like 4.30, it's still kind of a long travel day like I mentioned. So we took the 11 o'clock ferry on Sunday and then made sure we were back at the airport by like 12ish. So yeah, that was the trip. So, so, so much fun. And I already want to go back. Like I literally was like, okay, can I book a flight for like a week from now? Like I want to come back. So overall recommendations, book your transportation ahead of time book a golf cart ahead of time, maybe book a catamaran trip if you want to do something like that. Or there's obviously lots of other activities like day trips and stuff you could do. So definitely just try and plan that ahead of time so you don't have the headache of doing it while you're there. Get your pesos ahead of time. And then I will say like for ease of communication and just ease of everything, make sure you have data when you're there or like the ability to at least call and text. I would definitely recommend that because especially if you're traveling with a, like a larger group or something, you just need a way to communicate with each other. And if you're like how we were on the golf cart, like on the fly trying to look for somewhere to eat lunch, it's just so much easier to have it. And go to a beach club, go to Hidalgo Street, try Lola Valentina and Stingray and all those other places. But there's also so many other restaurants that we didn't even get a chance to try that I know are super highly recommended. So like truly just walk down the street and see what catches your eye. Those are my recommendations and that's kind of my explanation of the trip. Thank you so much for watching if you watched this far. So leave your recommendations in the comments down below for additional video ideas or whatever you wanna see from me next. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks, bye.